Good morning. We just want to welcome you to our Sunday morning celebration service. We're just going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Right there where you're at, just get ready to worship God and invite him into your home. Father God, we just come before you this morning, God, and we thank you, God, for giving us another day, God. I pray, God, that your anointing would just fill this place this morning, God. Lord, that you, God, would just flood, God, your overwhelming presence, God, would just fill our households this morning, God, that you would anoint our, our speaker this morning, God. We thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray and we all say amen and amen. Right there we at. Get ready to worship him.
worship him right there.
Father, we glorify your name this morning, God. We love you. We praise your mighty name this morning, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you this morning, God. Father, we just praise your mighty name this morning, God. Father, we're here to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We want to welcome you this morning to our Sunday morning service, amen. If you're just tuning in this morning, we want to welcome you online this morning. Uh, we're doing service this morning, uh, live stream here online this morning. You know, um, I know there's a lot of things taking place. It's a little bit, uh, it's in a hot zone this morning, amen, and we want to just take some precautions. Um, you know, myself, I was exposed to COVID, so I just wanted to be precautionary. Um, I did all my tests, everything's fine, everything's good. <laughs> I'm still here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we just want to, you know, welcome you this morning. Amen. We'll be having service online this morning. Next week, we'll be going back to our normal services. Amen. And we'll be just gearing up and getting ready and just, you know, doing what the Lord wants us to do. So this morning, we wanted to just, you know, be with you this morning. We want to spend time with you this morning, just for a little while. Amen. So be sure to tune in throughout the service. Amen. Um, so this morning, we want to stay in an attitude of worship this morning. And I know there's a lot of need out there this morning. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are struggling, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally this morning, you know, and we want to pray with you this morning. Amen. We want to, so this morning, if you have a need this morning, because how many know we have needs? Amen. How many know there's a lot of things right now that are happening, even starting out the year, you might say, man, I want to, and then all of a sudden it's like the second week and you're like, wow, what happened? Amen. So we want to pray this morning. Amen. We want to pray with you. We want to come in agreement with you this morning. So if you have a need right there, begin to begin to flood the comments section, amen, and we're going to come in agreement with you right now, amen, and we're going to believe, because we have faith that we believe that God is in control of everything. You know, God's in control of all situations, amen, so we want to we want to pray this morning, we want to come in agreement this morning, and this morning we're going to lift up um, Yvonne Harrell, amen, she's a good friend of ours, a sister in the Lord, you know, she's been, she's in the hospital, I mean, she's bad, she's a warrior, you know, he, you would think that she would just be there just kind of like in, in feeling lonely. I mean, she might even feel lonely, but you can't tell because she's she's there. She she can't see family. She's in a tough situation. You know, they, she, she's, she's been diagnosed with cancer. She had surgery. You know, and, and we want to believe. We're going to believe with her for a complete healing. We're going to believe with her for a complete, total you know, just that everything would be removed, everything would be gone, and that, that, that a miracle would take place right now within her life, that God would give her strength, that he would encourage her, because we know that, that God is right there with her this morning, amen? We want to lift up Victoria, we want to lift up Dion and my sister's mom, we want to pray that God would be with her this morning, you know, she's also battling cancer, we want to pray for, continually pray for Dion this morning, amen? And then we want to pray for Cynthia Al this morning. We want to lift her up in prayer that, that God would meet her right now. That she would believe and she would recognize that she's not alone. Because how many know we're not alone, amen? In this battle, we're not alone. God is with us, amen? And there's many this morning that need prayer this morning. We want to pray for Ari this morning that, that God would touch her right where she's at this morning. That he would be with her, that he would heal her, that he would deliver her this morning. Amen. And she's in the home and God's there. We want to pray that, that, that she would stay there and that God would meet her today in this need that she has. Amen. For those that are struggling with addiction this morning, we want to pray with you this morning. Those that are battling physically this morning with something. You might even just have the cold. Amen. You might even just be feeling under the weather. We want to pray with you this morning. Amen. We want to pray for those that are struggling mentally, those that are dealing with, you know, physical and mental health. Amen. And we want to pray that God would heal you this morning. Amen. So right right where you're at this morning, I pray that you flooded the, the comment section there. Whatever it is that you put there this morning, we want to come in agreement with you this morning. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you this morning, God. Father, we thank you for your Son and the Holy Spirit this morning, God. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, and I lift up all the petitions, God, all those that are there in the comment section, God, we come in agreement with them this morning, God. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, for Iman Haro, God, that, Lord, not only would you encourage her right now, Lord God, but that you would heal her, God. That you would move throughout her body right now, Lord God. That you would just restore everything, God. Restore her physically, God. Everything that she needs this morning, God. Give her strength, God. Give her, continue to give her the courage, God, to believe, God, to have faith, God. Father, we're believing in a miracle today, God. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that you just be with her this morning, God. Be with her family. Be with her mom. Be with her dad this morning, God. Encourage them this morning, God. Let them know you have everything under control this morning, God. Father, I pray right now, Lord God. 
that you would just move, God. You're not done, God. You have, been, you have a lot of work, God. There's many things that you still need to do within her life, God. Many miracles that need to take place through her life, God. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would have your way within her life this morning, God. Father, I pray, Lord God, for Victoria, for Dion, God, for Cynthia, God, for all these people, God, that need a physical touch this morning, God, that need a healing this morning, God, for a spiritual touch upon their lives this morning, God, for Ari, God, right now, Lord God, that you would move within her life, Lord God. Father, deliver her, God, from this, this alcoholism, God, from this thing that she struggles with, God, this thing that brings her down, God, when you want to do a work within her life, God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would encamp a hedge of angels around her this morning, God. Lord, I lift up Joe Morales, God, I lift up Joshua to you, God, right now, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would move within their lives, Lord God, open their eyes this morning, God, let them see, God, that you have everything under control, God, that they need to surrender to you today, God. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that your hand will be upon those that are sick in body this morning, God. Those that are struggling this morning, God. Mentally, God. Physically, God. Spiritually this morning, God. Father, I pray right now that your hand will be upon them this morning, God. Father, restore all those things that the enemy would try to tear apart this morning, God. Father, we love you, God. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise this morning, God. And we come again once in faith, God, believing, God, that you have everything under control, God. Meet every need that we have, God. Father, we love you this morning, God. We praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, amen. Praise the Lord. Right where you're at this morning, right there in your home, give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many know God is good? Amen. God is real good. He's just not good, but he's great. He's awesome. Amen. So this morning, we want to continue in that attitude of worship this morning. And right here, right now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up our tithes and offering this morning. Amen. And how many know, how many are excited? Amen. You're right there in your home. You're excited. You can, you can, right there where you're at, you can click on the QR code that we're going to provide in just a minute. Amen. And you can give to the Lord. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And how many know that right now where we're at? It's a time to be cheerful, amen. We just got out of the holidays, amen. We just, we made it, amen. How many say we made it through the holidays, amen? Praise the Lord, amen. If you're here this morning, you're tuning in, you made it through the holidays, amen. And how many know that's a good thing? That's a, it's a great thing to be cheerful. But the Bible says that we're not to give reluctantly under compulsion, to not give like, we, we're, like we're forced, but to give in a way where we're cheerful, that we give with a grateful heart. And this morning, I want to challenge you this morning that Maybe you, maybe you fell off. Maybe sometimes we fall off and we want to start over. Well, what a great time to start over now in the beginning of the year in our area of giving. So this year, make it a year of cheerful giving, amen, where we give cheerfully to the Lord, amen. And this morning, I want to pray with you this morning, and, and I want to believe that, that not only is God going to meet every need that you have, because it says after that that God is able to meet all the needs that we have at any given time. Amen? So we want to we wanna pray this morning, we want to believe, and we want to be cheerful in our giving this morning. So if you want to pay your tithes, offering, you want to give a love offering this morning, we're still collecting money for our, our victory homes. Amen? They're still there in the, in the QR. You can draw in the drop down. You can pledge to that. Amen? And we're believing this year that God's going to do some great things. You can also give to United. We can. We, we, we believe in world missions. And part of our, our ministry is world mission. So we have United We Can. If you want to be a part of it, you can reach out to us. We'll get you signed up. Maybe you fell off. Maybe you didn't finish. Sometimes we start good and don't finish. But how many know God wants us to finish? Amen. So this morning, right now, where you're at, right there, bow your head. We're going to close your eyes and we're going to pray to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you this morning, God. We thank you for your Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray this morning, God, that you would bless those that can give and bless those that can that may be able to give at a later time. We lift up this morning's offering to you right now, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you're doing, God. We believe, we trust, God, and we ask that you make us cheerful givers this morning, God. Father, we love you for everything that you do, for always being the God that provides, God. Lift up, we lift up this offering to you this morning. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, amen. So they're going to go ahead and provide a QR code for you right now. Amen.
giving this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I have um, one announcement. Well, actually two. I mean, we've been starting our fasting, our praying. I pray that all of you this week, we've been, we're one week into our fasting and praying. And, I, and I, I pray that God's been blessing you. Amen. Or, you know, been moving in your life. So we're going to continue to pray and fast. Um, we'll be here Tuesday night or we'll be doing prayer on Zoom. Amen. So, you know, get ready and be prepared. Get equipped. You know, we're, we're, we're continuing our prayer and fasting. And we're believing through this prayer and fast that God is going to do something powerful, something tremendous within all of our lives. Amen. Also, Women's Convention is coming up uh, March 1st and March 4th. If you need more information, you can reach out to my wife, get signed up. I know some of the sisters are already getting ready. They're excited. They want to go. So you want to be a part of that. Don't miss out. Amen. Be excited and get ready for Women's Convention. Amen. So this morning, I wanted to continue. I started a series this morning, amen, uh, last week, amen, and I wanted to continue on that. And, you know, I talked about, you know, being armed and ready for the battle. Because how many know that we're in a battle, amen? We're, we, we're in a constant battle every day. But we need to be people that are armed and ready for the battle, amen? Because how many know that if we're not armed and ready, then we're vulnerable, we're, we're exposed, and the enemy can come in, and he can do whatever he wants to do within our lives. So I started talking about it last week. I'm going to be continuing for the next few weeks. Amen. So this morning, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to begin in verse 10. I'm going to read through verse 17. So go ahead and get there. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a second to get there this morning. And, you know, I just want to pray that, you know, God would continue to move within your life. Amen. Because how many know, like I said, it's a, we're in a war. You know, we're, we're in a constant battle. It's interesting how you see life right now, right? How you see everything taking place in the world that we're living in today. We constantly think, okay, we're getting out of this, and then all of a sudden, boom, here's another thing. Oh, we're getting out of this, and then boom, here's another thing. Right now, we're already like in the mindset, okay, what's next, right? And now they're coming up with all these, <laughs> they're coming up with all these things, right? Even this morning, you know, we've been meeting here. We've been meeting since last April in, in, in person, but I just felt that, you know, I, I felt like, you know, we need to be a little precautious, and just because a lot of people were just, with not even just coronavirus, just sick in general with colds and, you know, and, and I don't want, and everybody's like, oh, I don't got coronavirus, but I want to, but you know what? We need to be careful. Amen. So just, we don't want nobody getting sick any, anyway, anyhow. So next week we'll be back, we'll be back and we'll be just really going in the momentum that God wants us to be in. But this morning we just took a little bit of a break to having everybody here, but what doesn't mean we're going to stop what God wants us to do. Amen. Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 17, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power and put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. It says, in addition to all this, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil. And like I said, that all the flaming arrows, not just some of them, not just the, not the ones you can see, but all of them. Amen. And then it says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of of God. In verse 18 it says, and, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. It says, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you this morning, God. We thank you for your Son and the Holy Spirit. We thank you today for everything that you're doing within all of our lives. We pray this morning, God, that your word will fall on good soil, that every heart would be ministered to you this morning, God. We love you. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. And all the honor, in Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. Praise the Lord. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. The Amplified Version says it this way, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, is not only, excuse me, against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. In the New Living Translation, it says, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. You see, as Christians in our Christian life, we battle against rulers and authorities, powerful evil forces of fallen angels headed by the devil, who's a vicious fighter. He don't fight fair, right? He's not a fair fighter. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be alert and sober-minded 
Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I had this picture I was going to share with you. I'll share it next week. But it has, a, it has a picture of a lion just like, kind of just like, he's just sitting there and wait. And it talks about, you know, he's, he's ready, looking for someone to devour. See, as Christians, we have an enemy that is there waiting to attack any time he sees an opening in the life of a Christian. Paul says we're not fighting, our, and our struggle is not against flesh and blood opponents, but against rulers of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness, against the spirit against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Peter says to be alert, to be in control. Your enemy is roaming around looking for someone to devour. To be alert, to be in control. See, our enemy, the devil, is going to and fro looking for someone to take out. Before we can be armed and ready for battle, we must recognize one thing. We have to recognize who our enemy is and then we have an enemy who's there trying to interfere and take us out. We have to recognize that. You see, as believers, we need to be ready for the battle with the, with the full armor of God. We can't be people that only have a piece or one part, right? We have to be ready with the full armor of God. In order for us to withstand our enemy, and be able to defend ourselves as Christians, we have to first realize that he exists. And we have to realize that we have the power to defend ourselves given to us by the Holy Spirit. And we have to realize that we have the power, right, to defend ourselves. We have the power. You have to believe that this morning, that you have the power this morning to defend yourself. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. We have the Holy Spirit. We have to know we're not fighting fan a fantasy demon. Because sometimes we think, oh, it's not real. Right? The enemy, oh, that's, that's all fake. You know, people out there think that way. That, the, that there's, no, there's no enemy. That there's no devil. Right? But demons, right, we have to realize that we're fighting. We're under the control and the authority of the devil. See, as we became believers and gave our lives to Christ, these beings became our enemy. And try everything, they throw everything at us. Every device to turn us away from God and back to our sins. They are a pow powerful army whose goal is to destroy the church. It is said that when we are born again, we are born into a spiritual battleground. Even though we're guaranteed victory, right? Because we're guaranteed victory. As believers, we're guaranteed victory. If you, if you spend your life serving the Lord, living for God, committed to God, then you're guaranteed victory. I don't know if you know that this morning, but you're guaranteed victory. If you're a Christian this morning and you're a believer and you live your life, if you live the, the rest of your life serving the Lord, then you're guaranteed victory. What a great thing to think about this morning, right? You, you think, man, I, I got victory. I can have victory this morning. All I have to do is believe. All I have to do is live my life for the Lord. But even though we're guaranteed victory as believers, we have to engage in battle until Christ returns. Because Satan is constantly battling against everyone who's on the side of the Lord. He's always coming at us. He's always attacking us. We are in need of supernatural power to defeat this enemy of ours. And God has provided that through the Holy Spirit and his armor surrounding us. God's provided a way of protection. So as we battle this enemy, there's no reason for discouragement. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws at us and tries to do to take us out. All we have to do, like the Bible says here, is to stand firm. We just need to stand firm. What's the day of evil? Well, Ephesians chapter 6 describes the spiritual warfare that the individual believers will face. But it also reassures us that we have been given everything we need to walk in spiritual victory. We have everything. We've been provided everything that we need to walk in victory. And even though Paul uses the physical description of what is used in normal war warfare to describe what we need and is available to us to fight this spiritual battle, Paul says in verse 13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, 
so, when, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. It doesn't say you, you're, you're going to give up and throw in the towel and run away. It says, no, that you'll be able to stand. You'll be able to stand your ground. How many know that's a good thing? That we're able to stand our ground, no matter what the enemy throws at us, no matter what he tries to do to us, but we have the power. We've been given the power, we've been given the protection to stand. We have to realize one thing, though, that there will be days when we face warfare against evil spirits who have been assigned to derail us from fulfilling our God-given purpose. We have to realize that, though. We have to be real within ourselves and say, you know what, there's going to be things that are going to come. There's going to be things that are going to happen. I've just got to recognize when the enemy is coming after me. It might sound intimidating, but we're not alone. You're not alone this morning. God is there on the battlefield. We just need to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, and see that he is there. That on the day of evil, if we believe and have our eyes on God and believe he's there with us, that he will protect us and send warring angels to help us. See, God will never leave us or forsake us. That has always been God's promise to us, right? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll, I, I'll be right here. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is seek me. All you have to do is look for me. There's two places spiritual battle takes place. It happens in two places. The heavenly places, the unseen realm where angelic and demonic forces are at war. The second is in the life of the individual believer. This happens in believers' minds, emotions, and body. It comes in all shapes, sizes, and forms, right? Sometimes you struggle mentally, right? When you're going through it, I don't know what's going on in my head. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know why I'm thinking like this. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. I don't know why, why man, I just don't feel it, right? You get, you get all wound up. When does the battle take place, you might ask? Well, the battle takes place, as Paul states in verse 13. The spiritual takes place on the day of evil. The day of evil means on a particular day at any particular time. There are days and times when the enemy will come to try to deceive you or discourage you or to turn you away from your commander in general, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's days he comes and he makes you feel like, even right now, you might be feeling like, well, you know, I really don't feel like really tuning in this morning, right? Man, I really don't feel like all kinds of sorts of things, right? Just not feeling it this morning. There's days we feel like that. And that's usually when the enemy comes in, when we're at our weakest place or our or at a time where we're feeling like just a little discouraged or disconnected. Real talk, the day of evil is the result of strategy on the part of the enemy that is specifically designed with the weaknesses of the individual in mind. He has a strategy, right? He has a strategy to attack us in our weakness. Even, even myself, I'm, I'm not exempt. I, he, he tries to attack me in places where he feels that I'm, I'm weak. Or if he sees an opening, he says, oh, I got it. See, the enemy knows you. He knows us. And his attack on us is based on, on a strategy. But to withstand their attacks, we must depend on God's strength and use every piece of his armor. Every piece, right? That's why Paul says, put on the full armor of God. He doesn't say put on a piece, right? Just take, oh, you can just use this today, right? No, he says, put on the full armor of God. Put on everything. Put on every piece of the armor. You see, the whole body needs to be armed. We need supernatural power to defeat Satan. And God has provided this by giving us his Holy Spirit within us and his armor surrounding us. So we have to understand, we have to be armed and ready. We have to be prepared. In verse 13 and 14, it says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, after you've done everything, 
recognize, seeing him, understanding him, and, and say, you know what, I'm going to make it through this. I'm going to be able to stand here. He says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. You see, the first piece of armor Paul talks about is the belt of truth. When you think about this, though, right, realistically, you know, because nowadays we, you know, when we get truth, we get, we get dressed in truth. We get dressed, amen? A belt isn't usually the first piece of armor that comes to your mind when you're thinking about arming yourself for battle. It's not the first thing you think about. You don't think about, oh, I need a, no, you think, usually we think about a sword or a shield. Paul mentions the belt first. Like I said, it's probably one of the last things you would think about. It's like when, you know, when you put on a suit, right? When you get dressed. The belt we put on is only good for holding up our pants. The belt Paul was talking, making reference to here in this passage of Scripture, it looks different than we are accustomed to wearing. You see, when a Roman soldier would get ready for battle, he would put on his belt, which was called the cingulum or the beltius, which held a scabbard for the sword, right? Had a, had a scabbard there that would hold the sword, would hold it in place, which Paul describes here in Ephesians as the sword of the spirit. This, this belt did a lot more than just hold up pants. It held all the weapons a soldier would carry and use while in battle. It, had, it would hold everything in place. It held the swords. It held all the, all the weapons he would need it. His equipment, right? It had different things there. Hang, his rope, his rope would be hanging there. And even his food, his rations that he would have. It would be there probably like in a little, in a bag, right? Like, you know, if you're, if you're in the military, if you've ever been in the military, they would, they would give you rations, right? And they would be these little packages, right? You add water or whatever, or you just open it. You know, but this would hold everything. The belt would secure all these things in place, or they would hang there, or they would be tied there, whatever it was, but they would hold these things all there, right there in place. It also had strips of armor, or armor that would hang down to protect the soldier's body parts from being exposed. There was also pieces that it would hold, that would like hang from it that would cover parts of the body from it being exposed. It protected the lower parts of the body. The belt was important because if it wasn't secured properly, it would leave parts of the soldier's body exposed to the enemy. It was important to keep the soldier from being exposed. If it was crooked or not sitting correctly, it left the soldier vulnerable for attack. In other words, if it wasn't set in place correct, it left him exposed. If it wasn't secured properly, the soldier would have limited use of his weapons. So if they weren't right in the right place when the soldier would go to grab for them during battle, the enemy would deliver or could deliver a fatal blow. If they weren't in place and he, when he was in the battle, right there in the midst of the battle, right, and he would go to reach for it and it wasn't there, like coming up with an empty hand, right, the enemy could come in and deliver a fatal blow. So the belt had to be secured correctly to avoid the deadly blows of the enemy. It had to be secured properly, correctly, to avoid deadly blows of the enemy. So what is the belt of truth? The belt of truth Paul is talking about here comes from the Lord. To, to secure the belt of truth around our waist, we have to go to the source of truth, Jesus. John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus here refers to himself as the way, the truth, and the life. We have to continually ask God to equip us 
and spend time with him in prayer and reading the Bible. That's why every year, when you think about it, right, when the year starts, everybody, you see it going around, these, all, you see all, everybody all of a sudden ordering up these, one, read the Bible in one year, right? All of a sudden, everybody's going to read the Bible in one year. Every year, everybody starts out, we're going to read the Bible in one year. And I'm going to read the Bible one year. Then next year they buy another Bible, right? Because we're going to read the Bible again in one year. Amen. And then next year they write and they buy another Bible because they're going to read the Bible again in one year. And then we start this prayer and this fasting, right? It's not because we want to, oh man, you know, you need to do No, it's because sometimes we, as we get through the year, we begin to disconnect. Or we don't stay consistent sometimes. Or we lose sight of it, right? Even we're, we're, we're not equipping ourselves every day. So as we, as we enter this new year, we're saying we want to do new things. We want to do greater things. But one of the things we need to make sure that we're doing is that we're armed and ready for the battle. And the first thing we need to do is we have to know our enemy. The second thing we need to do is, is that we need to know, right? Or we need to equip ourselves with about the truth. See, reading the word will protect us from the lies and the deceptions the enemy is constantly trying to use and throw at us, right? When you think about it, when you read the Bible... All of a sudden, the devil can say, oh, you believe in Jesus? Yeah, because the Bible says right here that he's the way, the truth, and the life. Right? The Bible, he says, oh, that's all a bunch of lies. He starts to tell you, oh, why do you believe that? Because he says that you're a roaring lion trying to, trying to be alert so that when you come, that I'm able to defend myself. That I'm able to recognize that you're trying to take me out. But Jesus came that I could have life. And life more abundantly. See, when you know the Bible, when you start reading the Bible, when you start equipping yourself in prayer, you're able to stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to your lies anymore. I'm not going to sit here and let you try to play a dope feed move on me and let me try to get me to believe. You already did that last year. And I, I've had enough of it. That's where you need to get. To a place where we say, you know what? I've already let that happen too many times. I've already allowed you too much space in my mind. I've already allowed you to hit me physically, spiritually, whatever it may be. See, when you read the Bible, you're able to defend yourself from all these things. When he says, oh, where's God now? Well, the Bible says what? You can stand up and say, well, I don't care what you have to say. My God says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Where have you been? Right? Sometimes we, we need to confront the devil in a way where it's like, well, what have you done for me lately? Besides trying to mess up my life. Besides trying to destroy things in my life that God's trying to put together in my life. We got to get up and stand firm and start fighting the enemy and say, you know what? I don't have to listen to your lies. But the only way you're going to be able to protect yourself this way is that when you know the word of God. When you're praying and you're trying to seek God and you're, and you're making that effort constantly every day. You see, the enemy is always trying to distract us. And cause us to stumble away from the truth of God. He's always trying to do something to get your attention. To distract. Even right now. Some of you could be tuning in this morning. And he's doing some things right now to distract you. Oh, I can come back and watch this later. You won't. That's why you need to watch it now. Oh, I, I, I have something else to do. On God's time, you have something else to do. He's always trying to distract us. Always trying to get us to stumble. And then we wonder, how did I end up out here? How did I end up in this situation? Probably weren't reading your Bible. Probably weren't praying. See, the, help, the belt helps us from being exposed to the devil's lies. You see, Paul knew the importance of this piece of armor, and that's why he mentions it first. You see, we do not have an understanding of the truth. The rest of the armor is useless. If we don't know the Bible, we don't pray, then, then the rest of the armor is useless. If our belt is on crooked, we will have trouble grabbing the sword of the Spirit in time, and we will risk having ourselves exposed to the enemy. So how do we use the belt of truth? Well, the first thing is that we learn who God is. Satan is constantly trying to lie to this world who God is, and how he operates. He's, there, he's always playing games with Christians, with people. He is constantly trying to convince people that God is not good, powerful, or all-knowing. He is constantly trying to convince the world that all God wants to do is control. You ever hear that people say, oh man, 
I feel like you know, God's trying to control me or the people or, or, or the church or something, right? You always hear that. But really, it's the enemy trying to take control of your mind to deceive you, to get you away from God and get you away from the things of God. The belt of truth reminds us that God has a plan for our lives and God's love for his people. It reminds us. Right? Because when you read the word of God, you understand that God has a plan for your life. He's always had a plan for our lives. And that he loves us. The second thing is that we can secure the other pieces of our armor with the belt of truth. As mentioned before, when a, soldier arm, when a soldier's armor is properly secured, it holds the other pieces of armor and makes the soldier most ready for the battle. It's the same with us. When our belt is on properly, it makes the whole mo, excuse me, it makes the most makes us the most ready for the battle. When our belt is on properly, I'll say it again, it makes us the most ready for battle. If our belt is crooked, the rest of the armor is useless or less effective. You ever you ever put your you ever put your belt on? Right? And you miss one of the little loops. And then you're walking around like part of the day and you're like, what is going on over here? Right? And you realize, oh, wow. I missed one of the little loops. Right? So you readjust, take it out, put it back on. Right? And oh, okay. Now, now it feels right. It's the same thing with your, with the belt of truth. When, it, when it's on right, when you have it connected right, when everything, everything feels in place. That's why it's important to make sure that we put on the belt of truth properly. That it's not crooked or, or, or we can be exposed to the enemy. The last thing is that we, we can remind other Christians of truth in love. We can use it to remind other Christians of the truth in love. When our armor is correct, we can warn other Christian soldiers, right? Their armor is not on correct. You ever try to tell somebody something when you're not in the right place? You try to get it, you try to get the point across, and they're like, they're looking at you like, what? They, 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 don't, they don't understand. But when everything's in place, right? When everything's secure and you're the and, and, and you have everything there and everything's properly you know, connected, and you tell somebody, right? you can be far more effective. See, before we step on the battlefield with others, if we see their armor is not in place, we should help them adjust their armor. And I'm not saying go in there and you know, correct them. or No, I'm saying we can help them. We're able to see that, you know what, man, your armor is a little, let me help you out here, Holmes. Let me fix that belt for you, right? Let me fix that. Let me fix your helmet's not crooked. We can help them. When we see their armor's not in place, we should help them adjust their armor. And the same is with us. If a fellow soldier Christian sees our armor out of place, they should tell us our armor needs adjusting. That's what the belt of truth does. It helps us to recognize, to see, to have an understanding not only of who God is, not only what God can do, but it keeps everything in place. It sets every, it sets, it sets the whole armor in place that everything can be securely fastened, that everything can be put in place right. But if we're exposed, then we're vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. So the first thing we need to do to make sure that we're fully clothed is that we put on, not only recognize that we have an enemy, but that the belt of truth is securely in place within our lives. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. It says to put on the full armor. It says so that you can take your stand. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm tired of the enemy beating up 
Christian people. Tired of them taking out Christian people. People that are trying and making an effort to try to serve the Lord. But if you put on the full armor of God, then you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And you have to realize, when you, when you begin to do this, then you're able to understand that where it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. When we have the full armor of God on, we understand this, that it's not, it's not your brother, your sister, your cousin, nephews, your wife, your husband, that it's the enemy. Constantly trying to attack. Constantly trying to do what he can to take you out. That's why it's important. Like it says in verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, right? So that day when you're going through it, when everything's happening, when everything seems to be falling apart around you, that you'll be, that you'll be able to stand. Stand your ground. And then I call it says this, and then after you've done everything, right? After you've done all these things, right? After you, man, I, I threw the left and I threw the right, I ducked, I threw an uppercut, all these things, right? After you've done everything to stand your ground. It says to stand. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. If, you, you, if you've done everything, right, to, to fight the enemy on, to recognize, and you've clothed yourself, fully armed yourself, then stand up. Stand firm, then, he says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. So before we step out on the battlefield, we need to have the word of God. The truth securely, firmly fastened around us to help us hold everything in place within our lives. It's about the truth. If you feel out of place, things don't seem right. Maybe you need to check the belt. Maybe you need to, to look and say, man, is everything on right? Is everything secured right? Am I exposed? Has the enemy been, has he found a way in? So that when the day of evil comes, and when the enemy comes and begins to lie to us, that we're not exposed, excuse me, not exposed to fatal blows. But that we're not exposed. We shouldn't be exposed. This year you can't be exposed. Maybe last year you exposed and, 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 all, and the enemy came in and started hitting you, attacking you. But this year, let's not be exposed. Let's not be vulnerable. Let's not show weakness. Let's have our armor on this year. So that when the enemy comes and begins to lie to us, we're not exposed to fatal blows because everything is in place properly. That we're not giving the foothold to the enemy to get in and do damage to our lives because we have the belt of truth tightly secured holding everything in place. So this morning I wanted to share that with you this morning and we're going to continue. But we need to pray because maybe this morning everything's not in place like it should be in your life. You might be struggling recognizing who the enemy is in your life. You might be exposed and, and say, man, why do I, just things seem out of place. Well, this morning I came, I, I'm coming to you to let you know, to help you. We want to help you this morning get everything in place in your life. So that you can step on the battlefield and be fully armed and able to stand. See, we got we to take a stand for our lives this morning and tell the enemy, no more. No more listening to your lies. No more allowing you space within my life. No more letting you come in anytime you feel like it. We got to stand and say, you know what, I'm not a weak person. I'm not a weak Christian because I got God on my side. 
The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, that all that rise up against you shall fall. But you got to believe that. you got to stand firm in that. you got to say, you know what? I know what the Bible says because I have my belt secure. It's in place, and I'm ready to fight, fight this war. Are you ready to get on the battlefield? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to get prepared? Then this morning, let's start with putting on the belt of truth. This morning, get into your word. Start reading your Bible. Get into a Bible reading plan and, and, and read the Bible every day. Take, take a half an hour out of your day to read. Take some time out of your day. You, sh you should be. Before you place your feet on the battlefield, you should already have a prayer life. You should already be praying, asking God, I see the enemy. I recognize. Now protect me today. Keep me today. That should be our prayer. No more exposure to the enemy. No more giving him a foothold in our life this year. This year, let it be a, a year that we wage war against the enemy. That, that we stand out and we say, you know what? I know you have a strategy against me, but now I'm going to build a strategy against you. On the attacks. On all the things that you're trying to do in my life. This year is not going to be that kind of year. This year I'm going to walk in victory. This year I'm going to walk with my head high. Because I'm putting on the full armor of God this year. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to be ready. That's why Paul says, and, in pr and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord. So we're praying for you this morning. And right now we're going to pray. We're going to say a word of prayer and we're going to believe this morning. So go ahead and bow your eyes, bow your head, close your eyes, excuse me, and we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I come to you this morning, God, and I believe this morning, God. There are many people that are coming to this year struggling, God. Father, may barely making it in, God. Lord, but this year, God, let it be a year of victory, God, in their lives, God. Father, let them recognize their enemy, God. Let them take a stand this year, God. Father, let them know, God, that's the enemy trying to take them out, God. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, as they, as they recognize, as they, they come to an understanding, God, that there's an enemy trying to eliminate them from the blessings and the victory that you have for their lives, God. Lord, that they would do things different this year, God. That they would clothe themselves, God, in your full armor this morning, God. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that we would secure the belt of truth around each and every one of our ways, God. Lord, that we would not be exposed to the enemy, God, because we're in our word, God, and we're praying and we're seeking you, God, every single day, God. Father, I pray for a hunger, God, for prayer, God, a hunger, God, for knowing you, God, for knowledge, God, for understanding who you are in our lives, God. Father, I pray this morning, God, saturate your people this morning, God. Set those free that are still in bondage this morning, God. Let there be deliverance this morning, God. Father, we thank you this morning, God. Father, we give you all the glory, God, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I pray this morning that God ministered to you this morning. Like I said, we'll be back here next Sunday morning. But take inventory on your lives this morning. Take a step back and say, man, do I know the enemy? Can I see him? Do I, do, I, do I have a prayer life that I can combat him with? Do I know the word of God so that, I can, so that when he lies to me, that I can turn back and I can, I can look at the word and say, you know what? But the Bible says this. So this week I pray that, that you, you, you get into prayer that you would read, read God's word, that you would study, that you would look and say, man, I, need to, I really need to absorb what God's trying to say to me through his word. God wants to bless you this year. Let this be a year of victory for your life, for your family. God wants you to overcome things in your life this year. So like I said, we're going to be talking about this for the next few weeks. I pray that you were blessed this morning. I pray that you have a blessed day, a blessed Sunday, the rest of your day. I pray blessings 
then you go through your week with the Lord. Amen? So like I said, we'll be back next week. God bless you this morning. Right here for Victory Outreach, you can tune in on YouTube, Facebook Live. We're going to be you know, putting it out there on live stream every Sunday morning. And if you need information, you can reach out to us at victoryoutreach.org. You can leave us a message, and we'll get back to you. Amen? God bless you this morning.